Now that we've had a chance to review some of the familiar simple one-dimensional data structures that we've learned from basic Python, let's see how they compare to a panda series. A panda series is a specific kind of one-dimensional data structure that has named elements. So in that sense, it's similar to a dictionary. However, unlike a simple dictionary, series items can be referenced either by their integer index or by a string label that's similar to the key in a regular dictionary. If we want to create a series, we can do that by instantiating a PD series object by passing in some other kind of one dimensional data structure. In this case, I'm going to instantiate the PD series using the states dictionary that I created here earlier. After I've created the series, I can see that it is a one dimensional data structure and it displays both the string label for each item and its value. Unlike normal dictionaries and lists in Python, we can address the items in a series using either their integer index or their string label. Notice that selecting item number two gives us the third item in the list because like all other things in Python, series are zero based indexing. There's another way that you can refer to the item rather than simply passing in the integer or string index. And that is by using the dot loc or dot iloc. One thing that you should be careful about is that iloc doesn't stand for index location. It actually should be thought of as locating by integer since index by itself actually refers to the label index and that's what you get with dot loc. So here I can refer to the integer item number two or the location by the label index. And I notice that the value that I'm getting out of the series is a string since this is a series of strings. So this is all very interesting, but why should we care about pandas series? Well, there are two main reasons that I can think of. One is that panda series are built from NumPy arrays, and NumPy arrays are highly efficient. So when you perform operations with NumPy arrays, it's a lot faster than using the basic one-dimensional data structures that are built into Python. The other reason why they're important is if we understand how they work, it's going to help us understand the more commonly used pandas data object, the data frame. We can actually do a little experiment here to break apart this series that I created into its values and into its index components. And then we can ask what kind of thing the values are and what kind of thing the index is. So if we run this code, we see that the actual values are a part of a NumPy array, as I said. The index is a special pandas index object. And the useful thing to know about this is that the index objects are iterable. So we can iterate through either the values or through the labels. I can show this by creating a little for loop and then looping through each one of the values, printing what it is and what type of thing it is. And here I see each of the states and they are strings. I can also iterate through the indices. And if I do that, I see the string indexes. And I also see that the type of thing that they are is a string. However, it's actually kind of dumb to do what I just did right here because uh, like NumPy arrays, a pandas series can be used in vectorize operations. And generally vectorize operations are much faster and much more efficient. So if I want to perform a particular object on every item in an array, I can do that as a vectorized operation instead of as a loop.
So, for example, let's say that I want to add the string state onto each one of the values in the loop. I could do that by iterating through the values in the series and then concatenating state to each one of the items and appending it to a list that I'm building right here. So here's the list that I built. However, it's actually much easier to just simply perform the vectorize operation. In this case, I'm just saying to concatenate state onto the series and it will do it to each of the items in the series automatically. So here you can see that each item now has the string state attached to the end of it. You should notice that when you perform a vectorize operation on a series, the output is also itself a series.